I'm happy to. Well, I just wanted to ask, this is a question, not a comment. Are we all going to, I mean, I'm, my colleague here hadn't had a chance to answer and ask any questions. Uh, but will we have a chance to follow up as well with the secretary? Sure. Everyone's, we're doing another round. We have seven minutes each. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Senator Bozeman. Thank you. Thanks for the pep talk. Uh, thank you, Madam Secretary, for being here. And it's, I, I'd like to ask some questions that, that my community banks in Arkansas are concerned about. It's important to remember that Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank took on unique risks and were materially different from most U.S. banks, especially rural community banks who are safe and sound. In light of those unique risk profiles, and understanding that you aren't the FDIC chair, when determining whether to invoke the systemic risk exception, what specific data points, metrics, and factors do regulators focus on? Well, we were very focused on the potential for the failure of these banks and losses to uninsured depositors in the banks to trigger runs on other banks. And we looked at things like deposit outflows from other banks, um, anecdotal reports that we heard. I will say that many mid-sized banks um, expressed great concern that they have uninsured deposits. Um, often these are local businesses that can't operate within the insured, insured deposit limits. And these banks felt um, seeing many uninsured depositors having the view the only place you're safe is in the largest banks. Many of these banks felt um, very skittish about their potential to suffer runs as well. And I have heard this in many banking contact, contacts that my staff and I um, have had um, in recent days, that there is concern. We can see that banks across the country are shoring up their liquidity. They are very worried about contagion from the troubles of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. And the steps that we took were designed to um, improve the confidence of all depositors that they're safe in, in banks. And, you know, depositors often don't know about what the specific situation is of their bank, whether it's a mid-sized bank or a community bank. And if they're, they become worried, they can pick up their deposits and go someplace they think is safer. And um, we did not want to see contagious runs that could have impacted um, many banks, including community banks. Very good. Um, while Silicon Valley and Signature's uninsured deposits will be paid for by the Deposit Insurance Fund, banks will replenish the fund via special assessment. In reality, those costs will pass down to customer tax customers um, via higher banking cost, and I'm concerned that Arkansans will have to subsidize Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank's deposits, and maybe others, you know, that come forward. What specific legal authority exists for Treasury, FDIC, and or the Fed to exclude certain banks from being charged the special assessment? And will the community banks get charged that special assessment? I, I don't know what the rules are around that precisely. I think the FDIC may have some ability to determine which banks are charged. I believe it's up to the FDIC to make that determination. And again, absent uh, Congress passing a new law, what specific authority does Treasury, FDIC, and or the Fed have to guarantee even temporarily all uninsured deposits of open banks? Well, I mean, the FDIC, if it wished to put a program in place 
like the TAG program that um, I think was instituted in 2008 that requires congressional approval. Okay, very good. Thank you. Turning to a different issue, can you provide a timeline for when Treasury and or IRS will write any further rulemakings, guidance, or notices regarding the Inflation Reduction Act's direct pay provisions relating to tax-exempt entities? Are you referring, you're referring to the IRA? Yes, ma'am. Um, we have many rulemakings we um, are required to do to implement the features of the IRA, and we are frankly working 24-7 to get them done as rapidly as we can. I can't give you an exact date, but I can tell you that we're working on it very hard. We're full tilt. Um, w these are some rather complex rules, and um, we're working very hard to get them out. Good. Thank you. The CDFI fund is in the process of finalizing changes to its CDFI certification application. What analysis has Treasury done to understand the impact that the application changes will have on currently certified CDFIs? How will the changes impact recipients of ECIP funds? Also, will depository institutions be less likely to meet certification requirements under the new standards? And if so, what impact will have on the will that have on the fund's ability to support investment and access to capital in underserved communities? So, I'm I really need to get back to you on that. I'm not knowledgeable about the details of the change in that you're referring to. Um, certainly, the CDFI fund um, is trying to get money into the hands of CDFIs to lend in underserved communities and uh, certainly not to make it harder. And my staff will get back to yours if that's okay. Yes, ma'am. On the details of the question you asked. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Bozeman. Senator Haggerty. Thank you, Chair. And I'll just a couple of follow-up questions. One I'd like to follow up on a point that Senator Kennedy touched on, Secretary Yellen. 